In Martin Scorsese's The Irishman, tensions arise between former Teamsters Union president Jimmy Hoffa and the mob after Hoffa begins making dangerous claims on television and to reporters. When Hoffa was in charge of the Teamsters, he loaned money from the Teamsters pension fund to mobsters, but after being sent to prison, control of the Teamsters was taken away from Hoffa and the mob found it much easier to work with the new person in charge, Frank Fitzsimmons, as it was a lot easier to squeeze money out of him. When Hoffa was released from prison, he began making all sorts of dangerous claims, threatening to expose the Teamsters' connection to organised crime. And as such, this made gangsters such as Russell Buffalino and Fat Tony Solano uneasy, who advised Hoffa that he should retire and enjoy his grandchildren. One mobster, Anthony Provenzano, already has it out for Hoffa after the two fell out, and no doubt his whispering into the ear of the higher-ups played a part when the decision was finally made to have Hoffa silenced once and for all. Frank Sheeran, who was close to Hoffa, is chosen to carry out the murder, because he is close enough to get Hoffa without the man getting wise, and also because it would showcase Sheeran's loyalty to the mob. Sheeran carries out the hit without question, as shown in the film. What isn't shown is quite an interesting meeting that followed the whacking of Hoffa. Sheeran is tasked with reporting to his superiors, and present is the man who ordered the hit, the man who agreed to it, the man who was adamantly in favour of it, the man who took part in it, and the man who carried out the actual murder. The FBI in fact made a note of this meeting, which took part on August the 4th, 1975, five days after the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa. At the Vesuvio restaurant at 168 West 45th Street in New York City, Anthony Salono, Russell Buffalino, Frank Sheeran, Tony Pro, and Sally Bugs sat down to discuss matters. Sheeran details in the book The Irishman is based on, I Heard You Paint Houses, that the New York Mafia had turned down the Hoffa murder, meaning they would not sanction it, but at the same time, they did not oppose it. The OK had been given by the Detroit Mafia, which it had to have been as it took place on their territory, and the Chicago mob had also given their blessing, which was necessary given how close Detroit and Chicago are. The purpose of this meeting was to report to Fat Tony Salerno. Had New York been involved, Fat Tony would have already known how the hit went down and there wouldn't be a need for a meeting. Sheeran says that Sally Bugs sat at a different table whilst he gave his report to Fat Tony with Buffalino. Homicide detectives were all over the area, but that didn't matter much as there wasn't a lot of talking going on. It was just a case of letting Fat Tony know if there were any loose ends and anything else that needed to be done. Fat Tony was very satisfied with how everything went down. The meeting went as planned, but then Tony Pro asked for another one, and this time, the meeting was about Frank Sheeran. In the second meeting, Pro made the claim that Sheeran knew all along that Hoffa had wanted Tony Pro whacked. As shown in the film, Hoffa expresses his irritation with Pro to Sheeran multiple times, and also tells him he wants him dead, but Sheeran plays it down, telling Hoffa that he would never get the okay to do something like that. Pro goes a step further and claims that he heard Hoffa ordered Sheeran to kill both Pro and Frank Fritzsimmons. He then looks at Sheeran and says right to his face, if it was up to me, you'd have gone too. Sheeran throws this back at Pro, saying, that works both ways, everybody bleeds. Pro makes a second complaint, this time claiming that at the wedding of Bill Buffalino's daughter, Sheeran was telling people that Tony Pro was capable of killing Jimmy Hoffa, planting this seed in the minds of people. Things started getting heated, with both Pro and Sheeran rising from the table. They both walked away and sat down at different ends whilst the two senior bombsters, Buffalino and Salerno, talked. After a while, Buffalino came to collect Sheeran, and as they made their way to Fat Tony, Russell said to Sheeran, deny it. When they sat down, Fat Tony told Sheeran that he does not believe the Irishman would be thinking about killing a made guy for Jimmy Hoffa, and that was it. Sheeran thought to himself that yet again, Russell Buffalino had taken care of him, just as he had done on so many occasions, starting with fixing his truck and putting in a good word when Sheeran was in trouble with mob boss Angelo Bruno. Tony Pro was called to the table and he was told there was nothing to his complaint. But then Pro made yet another complaint, this time saying that Sheeran had made him look bad. Before Hoffa's death, 
There was a joint council convention banquet at Atlantic City that was a testimony dinner for Tony Pro, a bit like the Frank Sheeran appreciation night in the movie. Frank Fitzsimmons was scheduled to come and speak at the banquet, but he cancelled his visit because he was too afraid to come to Atlantic City because of Frank Sheeran. Whilst Pro complained, Sheeran noted that he was talking hot and that he never took his eyes off Sheeran. Pro said, You made me look bad. I didn't have the president. The president speaks at every joint council banquet everywhere in the country, except at mine. Fitz told me he heard you were going to give him a kiss for your friend Hoffa if he showed his face in Atlantic City. By kissing, Pro of course means killing. Sheeran's reply was as follows. If I was going to kiss Fitz for anybody, he'd be long gone. I'm not your pimp. I can't straighten out your affairs. It's not on me if Fitz is a pussy and has no confidence that you can't protect him in Atlantic City with all your muscle. Russell told the two men to shake hands at once, something which Sheeran noted was a very difficult thing to do, but he wouldn't dare say no to Russell Buffalino, the man whom without, Sheeran would not be sitting at the table. They shake hands, but Sheeran ends his thoughts on the meeting in the book by saying, I hated Pro for the whole thing. It's quite interesting that during this relatively standard meeting, such flames would be sparked. As usual, it's Tony Pro causing problems, and if it wasn't for him, Jimmy Hoffa would probably have not been killed. And yet, the whacking of Hoffa isn't enough for the man, this man who the Irishman shows is even willing to kill one of his own men for, just for being more popular than he was. He even wants Sheeran killed, bringing forward such juvenile complaints like being embarrassed at a testimony dinner because of Fitzsimmons being afraid of Sheeran. Rightly so, Sheeran throws it back in his face and the case is thrown out. It's made clear in both the book and the film that it was only out of respect to Russell Buffalino that Sheeran wasn't included in the Hoffa murder. Sheeran wasn't Italian and he wasn't a made guy. It would be very easy to get rid of him but it showcases how dear and respected Buffalino is that Sheeran is not included in the hit. Sheeran might have stopped it, found a way to warn Hoffa, or perhaps do something crazy like try to murder the people who wanted Hoffa dead, or flip to the FBI, or maybe talk to an outsider about his knowledge. Interestingly, decades later he would do just that, when he spilled the beans of the Hoffa hit to former investigator Charles Brandt, which is how the book I Heard You Paint Houses was born in the first place. Thanks for watching.